My dream internet is to dig a secret underground garage at the front of my house and at the push of a button, my DeLorean rise up out the ground and I drive off. It's gonna be connected to my secret underground tunnel system, which I've already dug. We've dug a massive hole in front of that. And in this video, we're gonna start fabricating the room. Way up internet and secret garage lovers, welcome to part two. So, I've got a massive hole in my front garden, but before I go any further, nearly seven million people watched the first episode and you're not all subscribed. So come on, give it a click, do the right thing. I'm destroying my front garden for you guys. Right, so we've got a big hole. We now need to start constructing a steel room within that hole. But of course, digging a hole makes a lot of mess. There is mud and stuff everywhere. We need to get that tidy up. That is our first job. And then at the end of the video, we've got a brand new bundle box and a 2023 Colin Furs Christmas jumper. Right, come on, get the brush and dust pan out. I've got to clean this thing up. I just passed up a job in the city. Said it's so pretty on my big white jet. Could have been the man your dad wanted in a pinstripe super took my bags and left. So with everything nice and tidy, it's time to get a reference of parallel off the house. So to do this, we get a nice long straight bar, space it off the wall, then use other lengths of bar to drop down into the hole, clamp them to the top bar, get them all nice and level, fix another piece of metal between these down inside the hole. We then use this as a reference to measure from. 67, 67, it's bloody spot on. The tunnel is absolutely bang on. 90 degrees to the house. We have come down here in a complete straight line. Like millimeter perfect straight line. So now we've got a reference, it's time to remove the steel that held back the last concrete pour for the tunnel, tidy all the edges up, measure the room, and see if there's any rocks in places we don't want them. That's a shot, isn't it? Right, overhangs are all gone. Room straight, walls are straight. Let's get some steel down. Let's get a floor in. First thing we do is lay a frame down level for all the plates to sit on. This is great because it gives us something level to work on. We are also bolting the frame to the floor so when it gets filled under with concrete, it doesn't try and float. And then we add mesh to hold the concrete back. Now, before we go and put any plate walls up, we've got something to consider. Where I am standing here now is where the soakway used to be for the house and the drive. And of course, there is gonna be a drive still above me. It's gonna rain, it's gonna get water on it. That needs to go somewhere. So, the cracks in the rock, they pretty much go on for the whole entire rock seam. You can stick a hose pipe down them, run it, run it, run it, it does not fill up. So, what we've done, we've cleaned one of them out, We've stuck a bit of drain pipe down into the crack, put it up against the wall, and we will connect onto that at a later date. Right, with that sorted, what's it time for now, Colin? Time for some floor sheets. Okay, we've got a wonderful floor. It feels so much better not to be walking around on the stone. But our next job, we need some big steel beams coming down the wall here because they're gonna be the supports for bigger steel beams which are gonna go across the roof. We're gonna put them in first because they're gonna go behind the walls and weld up to the back of the walls. We're gonna have one there, one there, and then the same mirrored on the other side. Now to get these down into our underground garage, I developed a lovely system of strap and lower. Basically, we attach a strap to the end of the beam, then lower it down, and with a little bit of hebin and jeebin, we can lower it down quite safely. Not bad, I even think I might be able to manage this on my own. Yeah. I then welded some flat plates onto the end of the beams to spread the load from when they've got all the weight of everything above them bearing down onto the rock. They'll be bedded in concrete, of course, but it's still good practice. So, with the beams up, we are ready for some more wall sheets, but at four mil thick, you're not gonna be lowering them down by yourself. So with next door out at the garden centre, I parked the JCB on the drive and carefully lowered the sheets down, minding the services into the house. And as a tricky as an operation this was, our biggest problem was yet to come this evening. With the most rainfall we'd have all year, the local area was getting absolutely flooded, including outside my front door, where I was getting a little tiny swimming pool. And of course, all that had to be going somewhere.
With a constant stream of water dripping in, it was time to lay out the buckets and hope for the best. Well, it's not too bad. We've had a load of loose stuff come off the walls, obviously, but obviously having water cascading into place is not a good thing to have in the back of your mind while you're trying to get to sleep. This is the perfect link for the sponsor. If you're someone who struggles with sleep or is either too hot or too cold at night, oh, is this for you. Eight Sleep is a temperature controllable mattress top cover. A what? So you're sweating, your partner's freezing, or you're just generally an uncomfortable sleeper. This is the system for you. It's super easy to fit, you don't have to wear anything. Carefully and in your own style, remove the current bed sheets from your bed. Fit the eight sleep pod cover to your bed just like you would do a fitted sheet. Inside is a network of seamless sensors which track your health and your sleep condition during the night. The cover is connected to the pod which can sit on either side of the bed. It is filled with water and connected to the eight sleep app. Refit your bed in, then switch on. And this is where the magic happens. It uses all the information from all these sensors to understand what you need to get your best night's sleep. Some people, when they're in a deep sleep, need a slightly lower temperature and it can make adjustments in real time to keep you for prolonged periods in a deeper and in a better sleep. And it can make adjustments to the environment as well. If the room gets really hot, it will lower your bed temperature to keep you at a constant temperature. And of course, it can do it on different sides. So if your partner wants something hotter or colder, theirs can be adjusted completely different. It's absolutely fantastic. It will change how you sleep. So to get your own eight sleep pod and mattress cover and change your sleep for the better, go to the link in the description, use your code Colin and you'll get 300 pounds off. It is absolutely awesome. Last night, I had it cool through the night and then set it to warm to wake me up. Right, let's go and mop all this water off, get back to a bit of secret garaging. So with the rain all mopped up and wiped down, it's time to start building this end wall to give ourselves a reference point to build all the other walls. Getting this wall right is absolutely critical. Our measurements from the line of the house needed to be checked regularly as getting this wrong will mean the whole thing will be out of line. And then once that's set, it's weld, 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 weld. With even more rain expected, we put an additional tarp down, which seems to have done the trick. We've got a nice swimming pool outside the front door, but at least it's not come cascading into the garage. Okay, that wall's all fixed and welded. Excellent. Next up, we need to do this wall. Now, it needs to be dead 90 degrees to that one, obviously, or all our measurements are a waste of time. Now, the easiest way to find out if something's wonky or not is to measure the diagonal. So, I've been on the computer, drawn it. I can see now what this measurement should be. So I've laid my tape measure across. I've put a bit of 50mm box section along the wall here. I've got it in the right place. Now I'm going to get a load of little tabs, weld them to the floor. So when we get the sheets, we can push them up against the tabs, push them up, weld them all together, do 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 do, put all the uprights up, bang, we've got a wall at 90 degrees to that one. Now with Rick taking an early Christmas holiday over at the Donkey Sanctuary, it's over to me to do it by myself. Welded to the back of each wall sheet is what I call a concrete plate, which is a nice thin flat plate full of holes in it so when the concrete comes down and swells around the steel, it goes through these holes and properly stitches the flat sheets of steel to the concrete wall block behind it. I will place at least one of these on each of the sheets and they will always be behind the upright beams for strength, but also so you can't see the weld scorches coming through on the sheets and adding blemishes. Because we can't have that, can we? Once the wall sheets and uprights are tacked in place, you add a horizontal length of box section across the top, checking for level and checking for straightness. You can see there is a little bit of warping in the sheet, but with a simple tool you can pull this back to shape, weld it together and bang, your wall is straight. We've got a wall! Yep, that's all sorted, that's all tacked up. Next job, we've got to get two RSJs and put down this side, same as we did over there. They've got to be parallel with those ones because of course there's going to be two big beams go across the top of them and they want to run in a nice straight line. Without a tunnel to brace off this side, I found myself knocking pegs and pins into the clay and stitch welding it to the frame at the bottom. This is all good, it just will add reinforcement to the concrete when it goes in. Right, that's got a wall up, all good. All I need to do now is completely weld this. Now I'm not gonna do all of that just yet because I wanna sort these roof beams out and I need to raise the uh, steel up a tiny bit higher, which means we're gonna need this. 
Roof bends. Best machine I've got for this is the Swag Off Road Bender. I've clamped it down to the Seedman Mini Fabricating Table. This is really good because this thing's heavy, the wheels lock off on it, and it's a nice height so your arms don't ache. There is definitely some jobs you can struggle on your own, but this is one I definitely can't. So I've drafted in the person which you all go on about in the comments as the person you can't believe let me do this to the house. With the measurements checks, the ends marked and cut down to size, it's down a little tiny hole and stacked up onto the roof. And then I forgot, I wasn't working with Rick. Oh, God, in! <laughs> Feeling the pressure. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even lifting it. Okay, so while I'm waiting for a lovely delivery from Newark Steel this afternoon, I thought I'll do some welding. So I've welded all the walls up, but this has caused an issue. The floor is biscuit tin in there, and that is very irritating because it's like working in a blooming drum. Now normally what you do with the floor is at the end, once everything's all tacked together, is you plasma cut some holes out and then you can reach round and then you can weld all the centre of these sheets to that frame which you saw me build a while back. Now I don't normally do that till the end because you don't want holes everywhere while you're trying to build everything because obviously you can fall down and drop stuff just a pain. But biscuit tin in is way more of a pain than a few holes. So I'm going to do all that now and do the floor bit. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Forgot about that. I thought they went that way. Check this out, look. This looks a bit weird. <laughs> so with my head out the floor, I cut some little slots in the back wall so I could get my clamps on to clamp the uprights to finish off the bad boy. Okay, with the back wall done, now I need to drop another roof arch down and then lower a roof sheet down somehow, pull it back up, sit it on top of the roof arches without them all trying to flip round on themselves and then tack weld that to the back wall. Not sure I'm going to do this. Well, a winch strapped onto the teleangler tine sounds like a plan. This is great as it gives us a really easy method of moving the sheets up and down without anyone having to be sat in the teleangler where they can't see anything that's going on. And with the winch pendant being long, you can operate it from inside the hole. It's looking fantastic. Right, next job, very crucially, got to put these surfaces in some ducts. We've got the water pipe, not worried about that. We've got the gas pipe, which is what the camera's attached to, not really worried about that. That's a bit of three quarter steel, that's okay. The main one, of course, is the electric cable. This one looks a bit old and craggly and pretty rubbish. So the sooner we get this covered, more supported, the better. And I'll have a nice little plan. So I've got some flexible, stiff pipe and then I'm going to cut it open with a grinder straight down the middle and then we can split it open with a bit of wood and hopefully slide it over the cable. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't slightly nervous about this. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's out the way. 
Ah, he could. Oh, here we go. Look what we're, we're getting there. Now. There we go. That's got that ducted, strapped up, supported all the way along the way. Feel a lot more comfortable, I've done that now. The water and the gas, I'll sort out once there's a roof, of course, because I'll be able to sit on it and just do that. It's gonna be a lot easier then. Right, cut some more sheets, lower them down, Finish the roof off, Colin! Now, one thing we're going to have to deal with with a metal ceiling is condensation. The tunnel is very warm. The warm air comes out the tunnel, hits my metal ceiling and condensates. I don't know what we're going to do about this for the time being. We're just going to have to live with it. So with the ceiling tacked together, it's now time to fully weld the seams, until... Don't know if you can hear that, I've made my first mistake. While I've been welding the ceiling, the cold water pipe, of course in plastic, is laying across the top of it. I've melted straight through it. Look. <laughs> oh, <bloody>. oh. <laughs> Luckily enough, I used to be a plumber. Right, let's go and switch it off. So after cutting the pipe too short and laughing my head off, I then finished the floor frame off, welded it up, welded the angle iron that supports the edges of the floor sheet, and I'd say that's room done and ready! Okay, this room is complete as much as it needs to be for the time being out. It's looking absolutely fantastic. It's quite a decent size, as we know. You could fit a car in here already, but there's another job I want to do before we go pouring any concrete round. I want to put the RSJ beams across the top of the roof so they properly brace the outer walls, because concrete's heavy, and when it starts coming in, I don't want the room sort of like creaking in and warping and the roof going up or whatever. That will strengthen it all up, that will brace it up. So I've took the cover plate off the top, We've got a nice big 600 kilo RSJ to kind of swing in somehow. Now before we swing the horizontal RSJ in, we've got to cut the vertical ones down so the horizontal one sits level, which is an easy tack with a bandsaw and at the other end, the plasma cutter. Didn't have to look too far. Then with the 600 kilo B swinging off the telehandler, it's time to delicately thread it underneath the remaining cover and onto our RSJ verticals. This was a little bit tricky. Once in position, the RSJ was laid flat, so we had strapped a magnet to one end to pick it up to make it vertical. With the beam now vertical, it was down to the job of carefully manoeuvre it onto the vertical uprights, ready for welding. Once in place, it looked absolutely fantastic. We sat down at all. Until old clumsy here when I knocked it off and got it wedged down the side and the magnet stuck at the bottom of the hole. This very much could have been a disaster. Fishing the magnet out was a pain, but luckily enough I remembered I'd plasma cut some holes inside which I could fish it out with. Then it was a case of swinging it back on the telehandler, trying to pick it off. My heart was in my mouth. If this thing drops off, we're never going to get it back. But we did. And I celebrated by stabbing a cone. <laughs> right, that's got one of them on. I think that'll do. It's gonna get dark, it's peeing it down with rain tomorrow, and this video needs editing. Now with any project and procedure, the more you do it, the more refined you get, the better at it you get. So I've been up to the farm and I've plasma cut these forky prong things. We can clamp or bolt or weld this to the upright vertical RSJs, and then we can lower the other one straight down into it, so it will locate to where it needs to be, and of course it'll stop it from falling over, because that could have been a lot worse. If we'd have got it wedged down the back there, then we'd have had to try and drag it out, we could have damaged the blooming, the wall that we've just made, we could be dragging mud off, the whole thing, it's just not good, not good. Now obviously we've got to get some concrete around it, but there's a few other little jobs which will happen over to the second channel, so obviously stay tuned for that. Mainly we need a door. It's a garage, so it needs a fire door, but also we need to stop all that hot air coming out the tunnel and condensating on it. And I know it's doing that because the vent from the tunnel out here condensates on my roof out here. So I think it's exactly what the problem is. So we need to sort that out. And then in terms of the next dig, when we need to dig the next bit, it's very much gonna depend on the weather. We've had non-stop rain for about five or six weeks here. 
The ground out there is really wet, so when Tom's on there with his digger, that's going to get churned up. Wherever he tips it is going to be wet and muddy, that's all going to get dragged back. We're just going to turn the whole place into a bog, and I don't want that happening. So we need a nice hard frost or some dry weather. That's probably not going to happen this side of Christmas. But Christmas coming up, aha! Uh -huh. So at the end of each year, I do a Colin Furs bundle box. And this year, it's pizza themed. Yes, the project before this, I made a bike with a pizza oven on it so you could cook the pizza on the way for it being delivered. Fantastic idea. Now, in this pizza box, you get a pizza to mold old t shirt, a Colin Furs beanie hat, a pizza themed sticker kit, an engineering flow tart laser cut on my HPC laser up at the barn by myself, a signed Rizzo print and a Colin Firth's Christmas card of me holding a reindeer in the air on the weightless machine. Now, if you want to get yourself one of these, links in the description at colinfirstshop.com. They are limited edition. They will sell out fast. But also, because it's Christmas, oh, I've got this. Colin Firth's 2023 Christmas Jumper. There we are, people. Hope you've enjoyed it. Got Secret Santa Project probably coming up next on this channel. Subscribe to both channels. It's a wonderful thing to do. I'll see you in the next one. Secret Garage lovers. <laughs>